Hi, Jeff Liu here. And in today's in this lesson, I want to talk about unique or advanced medical card features or medical insurance that you probably didn't know about. Now, this is a guide that I've come up with to add value to you. Now, just enjoy and uh, just digest one of some of the lessons we are going to share with you here. Now, you know that medical cards start off with a very basic thing and in case you are not a Malaysian, so it only covers for what I call as a medically necessary expenses when you are being admitted to hospital. It does not care, cover you for anything like you go to a general physician, it doesn't cover you for anything that is non-medically necessary and it only, a normal medical card will only cover you for expenses if you are admitted to the hospital. Once you are admitted to the hospital, so the expenses that is incurred relating to your hospital admission will be covered either before or after that but there's a certain number of days by definition but medical card um, has been evolving to a point that it will still now uh, there is medical card that will cover for non-medically related expenses when you are hospitalized now for example you might ask me uh, Liu CF like what what do you mean uh, what i mean is that when you are being admitted to hospital uh, just imagine if if on that night when you are staying the night at the hospital you see that your room does not have your favorite sports channel let's say espn and at that night there is a final world cup match so therefore you request for the hospital to actually can you shift me to another room or can you actually provide me with a room or a tv channel that actually actually enable me to uh, watch this uh, a World Cup final. So in that sense, that is considered as a non-medically ex uh, necessary expenses. So the medical card will not cover you for that. Now, however, there are medical card who will actually cover you for that, but conventionally it's no, but nowadays there are medical card that will cover for non-medically related hospitalization expenses. But again, it was kept, will be kept at about a few hundred per hospital admission. So again, it's good to know that there are such medical cards with these extra perks of feature like this. And of course, when it comes to these uh, uh, features, what we call as an organ trans transplant. Now, conventionally, conventionally, actually not conventionally, uh, truly at, of, at the time of this recording, you see that all medical cards will actually cover you when you are the recipient of an organ transplant or the donor, you will not, if you are the donor, you are the one who donate organ to some, somebody else, your medical card will not cover for, for you on that. But even if again, this is common between, you know, even for now, for all medical card, but there are some medical card that only cover organ transplant by capping it as once per lifetime, right? There could be a certain amount that they cap it at once per lifetime, maybe it is just like 50,000, 100,000, on that particular time but not more than that it does not follow the annual or the lifetime limit but of course there are certain medical card when it comes to organ transplant they will cover you as per following the annual and the lifetime limit and the next feature we're talking about cover for prevention benefit now in, in in malaysia you know that medical card normally don't cover you for any prevention benefit I would term that still as a non-medically necessary expenses. Now, conventionally, no, but there is medical card today, okay? Because product has evolved, and this is something that it taps onto what actually people want, right? But again, this does not come free because every of these perks and benefits actually increases your cost or your premium cost of all your medical card. Should you get it with something like that? So, you know that there are medical card nowadays they cover for prevention benefit like heart screening, your flu, hepatitis, uh, and shingles. Now, I'm not talk talking about this normal treatment. I'm talking about vaccination for flu, hepatitis B, vaccination, and, you know, and condition like that. And also, there are me medical card nowadays that actually also cover for mental health benefit. Now, what I mean by that mental health benefit, it means that you are consulting a psychiatrist for treatment or therapy. Conventionally, it is not covered, but there is medical card today by certain insurance company that actually cover, for example, some of these mental health related conditions like depression, 
postpartum depression, you know, obsessive compulsive disorder, OCD, and also bipolar disorder among some of the example I, I show you over here. Now, when it comes to cancer diagnosis, um, there's a certain medical card that has evolved, the product coverage has evolved uh, to cover something what I call as a genomic test for cancer. This is very rare, okay? Very rare. And b before I actually, you know, before I actually encounter this term, I don't even know or even aware there's this such thing. Again, that's the benefit when we are in independent advisory, we can see across all across the spectrum, all the products out there, and we can actually pick the one that actually is important for you, not for us, because product features are very constrained to a certain insurer and all that. End of the day, you make a choice like which feature, which company to go to based on the feature that is important for you. Now, coming back to here, genomic test for cancer, what is this, right? Again, this is something I Google. Now, it is not a genetic test for cancer, it's a genomic testing for cancer. Uh, it's meant to identify the DNA alteration that may be driving the growth of a specific tumor. Okay, so again, information about this genomic mutation that are unique to in case you get uh, cancer, which I don't hope that you get, can help doctors to identify treatment designed to target this kind of mutation. Because cancer is about abnormal cells. It's about mutation. So we are talking about whether this test will actually enable um, the oncologist or the doctor to actually identify which which treatment is actually best suited for you, whether it's radio, chemo, hormonal therapy, or targeted therapy, right? So if you can identify, and normally, if, if what I have read, it costs about 4,000 US dollar as of 2019 to actually do this test, which is about like 15, 16,000 of Malaysian ringgit. Again, when it comes to this a genomic test of cancer, I think medical card has evolved to actually also cover for this. Again, I'm not a doctor, but apparently this is something that is becoming very common. Now, moving on to next and still related to what we just talked about, outpatient cancer treatment coverage. Now, conventionally, you know that outpatient cancer treatment coverage is very common. They cover that best if you cover that per lifetime or annual limit. So what happened is you have something called chemo and radiotherapy, which is very common. But up today, the kind of treatment has evolved due to the advance in medical technology. There's also what we call as a targeted therapy, hormonal therapy, and also immunotherapy. These three things that I just mentioned over here, again, is also something new for us. I'm not a doctor, but when there's a medical card product that says that the perks or the extra unique feature is to cover for that, naturally you start to find out what is this about. Now, targeted therapy is something, now the source is, I put that actually from Google, I get this from Google and present this to you, the source is thestar.com, it says that targeted therapy, this news piece dated August 2018, um, they say the targeted therapy actually can prolong life. Um, it say that uh, it's not commonly available in government hospital, right? And they it say that in this 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 news piece when they are sharing, they say the oncologist, uh, you know, at the university hospital just you know just can't really help much. They go to a private hospital, doctor put put this patient through a PET scan, underwent a radiation therapy to stop the cancer growth. Da 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 da. So this. You want to Google more, again, I'm not going to too, too much into this one, it's called targeted therapy, but you know there's something that you can Google, there's something that's real, but basically, uh, targeted therapy, as a layman explanation for what I read, is about having that targeted treatment at the area or the tumor, rather than a treatment that is um, uh, non-targeted, so it actually destroys the bad cells, the bad tumor cells, and also the good cells as well. So targeted therapy will actually minimize the risk uh, of bad uh, good cells being destroyed in, in whatever radio or chemo treatment. Now, next thing is what we call as this uh, new breast cancer drug boost survival rate by 30%. Um, I think this is what we call as a hormonal treatment, okay, hormonal treatment. Uh, if you look at here, at the below over here, they say that uh, there are certain form of breast cancer which is fueled by the hormone estrogen and which accounts for two-thirds of cancer among women. It is generally treated by therapy that block the hormone production, right? So this is what we call as a 
from cancer treatment perspective, we call that hormonal therapy. Uh, according to this article, which is from New Switch Time, the uh, NST, it said the treatment is less toxic than traditional chemo because it more selectively targets the cancer cell, blocking the ability to multiply. And the next thing I want to share with you is uh, this is what we call as um, okay. Hold on. If this is uh, uh, hormonal therapy, then this is what we call as immunotherapy. Uh, immunotherapy. This method involves draw drawing immune cell from a patient blood, equipping each of them with a CAR or something, a receptor which binds itself to a specific protein on the cancer cell, allows the immune cell to attack uh, to track down cancer cell and and again kill them. Now this is like a more advanced form of outpatient cancer treatment. Again, I get this article from Straits Times Singapore, so credits for that. So I hope this sharing has given you uh, a lot of perspective of how the medical card product has evolved to actually cater for those of the modern, uh, more modern or more advanced treatment when it comes to certain illness or condition up until the point that there are some features which I think is really not so important like cover for non-medically expenses uh, which is good to have but I don't think that is as important as what I just shared with you on this kind of special treatment for cancer condition which I hope none of you will actually get hit by this kind of condition so let me know in the comment section below which one is important to you uh, what I've just shared uh, comment below subscribe if you like lessons like this uh, just hit on the notification bell so when there are new updates on what I just shared with you, you get notified um, when I post a new videos or lessons on investing, insurance and all that. So again, uh, click on like, drop a com comment below uh, what, is, what feature do you think is important enough for you. So that being said, this is uh, CF Liu and I'll see you in another lesson.